Until about 10 years ago, I had been very lucky in terms of not losing anyone very, very dear to me, except for my granny who died when I was nine. But in the past decade or so, I've lost a lot of the people who I loved most in life, starting with both my parents who died, coming up for 10 years ago now, um, three weeks apart. Dad had been ill, seriously ill and declining after a series of strokes in the year 2000. And so he had been declining for about a decade and that was hard to see this once really vibrant, almost too vibrant uh, man with ideas and strength of character and the ability to turn his hand to anything, slowly declining so that he needed a zimmer and unable to play golf anymore, unable to garden anymore and then finally sort of bedridden. And my mum looking after him, but my mum, you could see her getting tired of her. And then eventually she had cancer. Um, and so the two of them were now then essentially bedridden in the last months of her life. And it's, it's hard to actually understand what's going on in your mind as those things happen. We have a tendency to try and suppress our feelings about it, our fears, our worries. Um, by getting on with helping them, you know, doing the practical stuff, the, the cleaning around them, the getting them a cup of tea, the, the sort of casual, sort of easy conversations to just keep the f conversation flowing. And a lot of that is a, a way of hiding from yourself just the, the sheer scale of the potential pain that, that you're fearing. Not only seeing them decline, but knowing that their lives are going to come to an end and I found that I could manage the grief not in a, an unhealthy way but to be able to notice when, when my parents died in, in October and November 2012 that I could flow with the grief if you like, go with it the tears, the feelings, the emotions, the missing them. And that was healthy, without crumbling. And other times when I felt that it was a kind of unhealthy, darker type of grief, I was able to use my mindfulness to turn my mind towards more positive things. And of course, I'm dying in October, November, you can't exactly look out and say, well, it's a beautiful day because in October, November, we don't get that many, but there were some. And a reminder that, you know, the stars are still out there at night and the, the wind can be cold and bracing, but it can be uplifting and going for a walk and seeing nature. So I was able to, to do that, to turn my mind to positive things and healthy things. But after mum and dad died, Obviously, they've been the most important people in my early life. Um, I lost a series of aunts and uncles who were also pivotal people in, in my childhood, especially. Um, but also a couple, especially on my dad's side, his two sisters, my aunt Dank and my aunt Zosha, who I really got to know as an adult and understand the depth of their suffering in Poland, Second World War and also their remarkable resilience and their ability, like my dad, to have a full, rich, happy life despite having had the her most horrific of early lives. And so I lost them and I, I still miss them. Um, but then we got hit by a double whammy in the space of six months, um, just a couple of years ago, coming up for three years ago now, when I lost my brother, uh, David age 57 to cancer and six months later my sister Maria to the same horrible disease she was 67 and they are part of my existence you know the all my childhood I had this bond with my many siblings my brothers and my sisters and for the first time with David dying that was broken that was 
the bond wasn't broken, but the the unity of all of us being alive was was gone, and it's painful. It's still painful um, to have lost probably about eight or nine people I love in the space of a decade. But what I have found is because of this practice of mindfulness I do several times every day the feeling that comes through is gratitude gratitude being thankful that I knew these people I had such a good childhood I had such interest in, in, in rich parents um, and the rich in the sense of having full of depth of life and my mum especially, just the sense of kindness that, that kind of poured out of her. And you can both miss someone and just be really happy that you knew them. So you can have the sadness and the, the happiness together, I guess. That is what bittersweet means. Um, but bittersweet tends to emphasise the negative. Um, what mindfulness helps me do is emphasise the sweetness, emphasise the beauty and the joy of having known people and the joy continues.